when the phase one trial of semiplomab was underway for advanced cancers of multiple tumor types, it was noted that a patient with uh, advanced cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma had a durable, complete response. This led to the development of expansion cohorts, uh, seven and eight, and that would be for patients with uh, one group was combining locally advanced and local regional metastasis. The other group was uh, distant metastasis. Uh, because of the uh, good uh, objective response rate and uh, tolerability uh, based on those expansion cohorts, this led to the development of the pivotal registration phase two study, looking at just cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. Based on the data from the expansion cohorts seven and eight from the phase one study in CFCC, as well as the preliminary data from the pivotal registration phase two trial of semiplomab. This therapy was granted a breakthrough therapy status by the FDA. This led to fast tracking of its evaluation and now to its re uh, approval. In the phase two pivotal registration study that looked at both metastatic as well as uh, locally advanced patients, uh, we saw good results in both in terms of objective response rate. It's particularly uh, uh, notable that uh, patients with locally advanced disease have a very easy to document uh, to biopsy uh, because of the location of the disease being more visually uh, and clinically amenable to uh, assessment. So when people have a complete response, a dramatic response, and you have an externally visible lesion, there's a potential for a more clear-cut assessment of that response, and the tissue is easy to reach for multiple biopsies to prove that what you've seen is actually a complete response. I had some patients who said that their tumors uh, either melted away or broke off and what was left of them fell off onto the floor. So these are things that often uh, start happening uh, early in their therapy. And one of the first things people report after sometimes only a few infusions is a significant decrease in pain. And uh, once you start seeing that response, it, it, it can proceed rapidly. I have uh, multiple patients that were uh, my patients in this study that have a complete response and some of them have come off therapy and their complete response persists without any, any evidence of disease recurrence. Of course, there's a spectrum of responses. Some people uh, have more partial response or stable disease and you know, there's always a possibility that you'll have a patient who doesn't respond or who progresses. In my patients that I enrolled into the study, though, the major vast majority of patients had a response. Also, when you look at metastatic disease, we have to ask, where did the patient come from? What was the, the prior state of the patient that led to their metastatic disease? And from my perspective, the vast majority of metastatic patients start with some form of locally advanced disease. These are uh, cases where there's been some surgery, maybe it didn't get all the tumor and it recurred, and you can think of this as a continuum. So if that's the way the natural history of their disease progressed, if you can intervene at an earlier stage when they're still locally advanced, uh, you might have a, a, a disease that's more treatable, that has a higher response rate, and that's the way I think about it. So uh, really important to think uh, when you're looking at patients that have the locally advanced disease, not to let them go, because if you let them go, they get on to, they go on to metastatic disease, and the more distant the metastasis, the belief is the more difficult the disease is to treat, especially when you're looking to try and get a complete response, a lasting complete response. Uh, uh, definitely, from my perspective, metastatic disease is a much tougher, uh, and distant metastasis within that group, a much tougher disease to get to that complete response endpoint.